I'm going to save it to my desktop. I would normally not do that, but just, you know, for the sake of this video, I'm going to. So here we go. And then I'm just going to simply click export catalog. And since it's not copying any images, it really doesn't take very long at all. So it's done. All right. So if I hide Lightroom, uh, here's that folder called Petri. If I double click on that inside, we have the catalog and the previews data. That's it. Okay. And the size of the catalog file is only seven megs. So, hey everyone, this is Gary. And um, I wanted to make this video to show you all how to create a new catalog from an existing catalog. <clears throat> so why would you want to do this? Well, um, if you have a catalog with a massive amount of images, uh, it does become unwieldy. In spite of what Adobe says, the performance, you know, suffers. And it's just kind of a pain to be dealing with a catalog with, say, 30,000 images in it. Uh, if you're a wedding shooter, uh, you're typically shooting thousands of images for each wedding, and you can quickly uh, build up uh, a catalog that has tens of thousands of images. So um, I think for a wedding shooter especially, it would probably be a better strategy to create a new catalog, uh, say, maybe even one for each month of the year, uh, maybe just for the entire year. But anyway, if you've already got an existing catalog, you can easily break out specific folders and images into a new catalog that meets your requirements. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here's a catalog. It's got a lot of images in it, over 25,000 images. So let's say I'm going to go to um, this folder right here. Okay, this is a folder with 299 images. Uh, it has two subfolders, one called Candids, and there are 259 images in that. There's another folder called Cover, in which there are 40 images, hence 299. So I want to create a new catalog that just contains this folder. And this is real simple to do. You just simply right click and go to export this folder as a catalog. What could be easier? And then here's the, really the only important part because you don't, assuming that you already are happy with how you've organized your images in folders, um, you don't need to move them. You don't need to create copies of them for a new catalog. You can leave them exactly where they are. So just make sure that export negative files is unchecked. And if you don't use smart previews, make sure that's unchecked. And just have include available previews checked. That's all you really need to do. So I'm going to call this new catalog Petri. Uh, you know, it's a lot smaller than the catalog that I was using. So let's go back to Lightroom. So if I go to Lightroom, and this is on the Mac, on the PC, this command will be under the Edit menu, uh, and I go to Catalog Settings, and I go to General, here's a file path to my catalog. So I'm going to go Show, and this catalog is 2.5 gigabytes, right? as opposed to this catalog, which is 7 megabytes. The performance of this catalog, because it's so much smaller, is managing so many less images, is going to be a lot better. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, why not just create a new catalog and import this folder? Well, yeah, you can do that for sure, but you're going to lose all of your edits. The only way that you can retain edits that are already in an existing catalog is to export out to a new catalog. That will save your edits. Okay, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. But I just want to go over one other scenario. Okay, let's say I wanted to also include, I'll choose this folder here because it only has six images in it. So, let's say I also wanted to include that folder in this new catalog I created. Now, um, as you can see, if I look at these images, this was the original shot. See, he's looking away. He's also looking away. So I took heads from another photograph and put them in here. All right, whatever. That's not a Lightroom thing. That's a Photoshop thing. But the point is, this has this photo was brought back into Lightroom, and I proceeded to, and I'll show you. 
I did some more tweaking to it, okay? Now, if I were to bring this into a new catalog by simply importing this folder, I would lose these tweaks here. So here's what you have to do. All right, going back to the library module, I'm gonna basically, and I know this is a little bizarre, but this is what you have to do. I'm going to use the same command, export this folder as a catalog, and we're going to call it oh, temporary, temporary, okay? Same thing, just making sure that include available previews is checked, export the catalog, boom, I'm done, okay? So now, what I'm going to do is go to open catalog, go to my desktop, go to Petrie, and open the catalog I created previously for that, and Lightroom can only open one catalog at a time, so it tells me it needs to relaunch. So when the Petri catalog launches... All right, so here's the thing that you should understand about this. Um, Lightroom, and when you create a new catalog via export, will keep your folder, your directory paths intact. So as you can see, here's the master folder, Lightroom Photos. I don't really need to see that, so I'm going to go hide this parent. So here's peppermint tree, and then candids, and cover, right? So nothing was moved, but this catalog now just contains these images along with all their edits. Okay, so I'm going to choose import from another catalog, and this time I'm going to go out to the folder called temporary, select that catalog, click choose, and then here we go. See, here are the six images. What do I want to do? I want to add these new photos to the catalog without moving, right? That's all I want to do. So I'm going to click import. It's going to import those photos. It's showing me the master folder again. Now, because this folder, KHS underscore 45, was at the same level as Peppermint Tree, uh, the catalog for Peppermint Tree, ptree.lrcat, maintains that directory structure. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So that's how you would bring in uh, additional folders if you wanted to bring in additional folders to a new catalog after you created this new catalog using the method I just mentioned. Now, I could drag this folder into the peppermint tree folder, but when I do that, I get this message that says the files are actually going to be moved on the disk. Now, I don't want to do that because the original catalog will no longer know where that folder is. So you have to be careful. So I would recommend using collections. So here's what you can do. You can go hit the plus sign under collections, go create collection set. And we're going to call this collection set Petri. And um, we're going to go create. Okay, now we have this collection set called Petri. There's nothing in it right now. So I'm going to click on KHS 45, select all, and then I'm going to go down to collections, hit plus. I'm going to go create collection. Inside a collection set called Petri, I'm going to name it whatever, KHS underscore 45, and then I'm going to go include selected photos, hit create, then I'm going to go to uh, Candids and go select all, that's Command A on the Mac, Control A on the PC, go down to collections, hit the plus button, create collections, uh, Candids, Include selected photos inside a collection set called Petri, create, and then one more. Cover, select all. New collection, create collection. Inside a collection set, we'll call it cover. And hit create. Okay, so now I've got a collection set inside of which I've organized these photos exactly the way I want them. Now, the beauty of this, uh, of collections in general, is I haven't moved or changed anything. The locations of these original images are still in the same place. Like this folder, KHS underscore 45, still exists outside of Peppermint Tree, but in this collection, I've moved it underneath into this collection set called Petri. So it's now at the same level as these other two folders, whereas the actual folders themselves are not. So think of collections and collection sets as virtual folders. Again, I haven't moved or changed anything on the disk drive. So 
collection and collection sets are very powerful features. Um, all right, so I think that's it. I hope you guys found this helpful. So I'll see you next time. Bye.